Hey what's going on guys, Kwame here, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm bringing you guys another guide for Escape from Tarkov, and this one is going to be, um, we're going to be discussing tracking players and finding players and anything around that nature. Um, so I know it's like early wipe right now, uh, well it's getting close to mid wipe, but um, I'm sure we're all really excited that we finally got the wipe, and some of you guys might be new here, so you might be, and you also might be new to the game of Escape from Tarkov, so you might be having trouble trying to find players and um, trying to understand what goes through their mind and what, what they're doing when you're, you're in a gunfight with them and all of a sudden they go missing and you can't find them. So anything along those lines of um, finding the players or tracking the players or some friendly advice from me. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and what I do personally that work for me when I can't find these guys, okay? So, thanks for stopping into the channel, much appreciated. Don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button for me, um, it means a lot. Feel free to leave a comment down below um, and tell me what you think, think of the video and give me your own thoughts. I'm more than happy to hear it. Feel free to swing by the live stream and say hello sometime if you feel like you want to have a chat about the game or whatever, if you've got any questions. Um, I stream six days a week at twitch.tv slash Kwame. All other details are in the description box below. Thanks for hanging. Appreciate you stopping in. I hope you learned something. Now let's get into the video. Okay, first things first, guys. The main thing and the very first thing you want to focus on is the audio cues, the sounds. The sounds that you hear in the game will tell you pretty much where the enemy player is. So um, there are different types of sounds. There's obviously gunshots, footsteps, but there's also um, like wood, bushes, um, and metal. Those those three sounds in particular are very, very loud and they're very distinct. So when you hear that, make sure you're on alert. Um, just like in this clip here, I believe I hear someone on metal. I think to myself, where could there be metal um, in this area? Right in front of me, there's the jump over for the um, uh, for the gas station. I believe this player has jumped over and he's gone ahead of me. So following the sound of the metal, which is what I heard, I attempt to go after him. So as I'm trying to jump up like a doofus on top of the um uh, on top of this truck uh, i'm trying to scout forward i happen to spot him uh get out my dvl and i scope him out and there he is ru running dead ahead of me i take a shot i miss because i suck um but i'm pretty sure i hit him right there and that would have hurt him and i'm pretty positive he he has to stop there to, to heal himself so in this type of situation which is what will happen to you um this is one of those situations where the enemy player has to stop and heal. And look at the timing of the distance of me to get up on top of this bridge. He couldn't have gotten far, right? He couldn't have gotten far. So I'm assuming he's somewhere around here. And he did something really sneaky right there. He decided to stick right in that bush and he tried to heal himself. But I was obviously, as you can see, I was way too quick. And I shot him in the end, end up uh, blasting him right in the face with, the, uh, with an MP7. But he did something really sneaky and that really threw me off. So this is the first example. Follow the sounds, um, find the player, and then um, and then take him down when he when he can. But the main thing is, I read the situation correctly. When I knew I tagged him, I knew he was hurt, and I knew chances are he's going to have to stop. Just remember, when you get hit by something, especially with a powerful bullet like an M62, which is what I shot at him, um, it knocks away your stamina too. So he has to stop. You know, he has to stop. So he, I knew he couldn't be far, regardless. I was not expecting him to be in that bush right there, right in front of me. He almost killed me. He almost got me. It was a good attempt by him. I'll give him that, but not good enough. So listen to the audio cues, um, listen into the sounds, follow him down, and track him down. All right, this is going to be the second example. And there's actually going to be two different things I want to talk about in this particular example. The first thing is to get elevation. Getting elevation and being able to um, be above everything to look forward, kind of like what I'm doing here, I can see that entire area. Um, so that's a really handy tip to do when you're trying to look for or scope out where the players are. The third thing here is the extension of that, which is the scoping and free look effect. And what I do is I ADS with with a scope. Uh, it has to be like a four time scope or something like that. Anything with long range, so a voodoo scope or a hammer, a bravo scope, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I ADS and then I use the free look command on my mouse to to look around as I'm scoped in, so I can see that entire area in front of me. Uh, zoomed in and so anything that looks like a person I can immediately scope in onto that so then I know um, what it is and what happens I happen to spot this player who um, 
who looks like he just got into a bit of a gunfight. He looked really injured. Um, I happen to spot him from up here in the big window. Like, he, he doesn't have much hope. Um, not while, while I've got this gun with this scope. And he's limping, you know. So my suggestion to you is to start using this technique. Um, it's very, very valuable, as you can see. Um, I actually learned this trick from Ghost Freak 66 um, He's probably the best player in the world, if not one of the top five players in the world. I've learned a lot of stuff like this just from watching him. Um, so I suggest if you want to see some top tier gameplay um, to go check out his channel, which is uh, twitch.tv slash ghostfreak66. Um, you'll learn a lot from him. And I'm also trying to learn a lot from him. So this is a trick that I learned from him. Um, start doing it. You'll be able to spot players um, a heap more rather than just sitting in the bush and trying to see what moves in front of you. So when you're doing this technique, you're looking for ir irregularities um, in front of you and things that kind of stick out. Like, for example, you might have and see purple and it's from someone's pilgrim bag and that's sticking out, you know. So you look for things that stick out, look for um, like dark spots in a bush as well. One last thing uh, about this technique, if you're going to start doing it, just if you didn't notice before when I was doing it, I was moving back and forward. Um, constantly, I never stopped um, as I'm scoped in and free looking around. I'm constantly moving left and right, back and forth, sort of a thing, just in case someone happens to have eyeballs on me and he spots me and he, um, he wants to um, take a shot at me. So that's just a precaution in case that happens. So, you know, make it harder for them. If they're going to take a shot at you when you're doing that, make them work for it. You know what I mean? So start doing it and thank me later. So this next scenario is a very common scenario in Escape from Tarkov. Um, you happen to spot a player, um, you, you start taking shots at him because he's out in the open, and then um, he, he ends up getting away just for the time being. So the next point I want to make in this video is planning ahead and reading the situation, reading um, the enemy's movements. By reading his movements and understanding where he could go is where is what you should do. And you probably ask me, what do you mean by that? Um, in, just like in this situation here, I spot a player out towards the the med lab. Uh, I decided to take a couple shots at him um, with my DVL. That first shot I took looked pretty good to me, but I, I guess I didn't hit him. Um, I may have hit him uh, with with one of these shots. Honestly, don't know, but they looked good to me. Um, but just look at the direction of where he's running. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about reading the movements of your en of the enemy players. Okay, he's going towards the right from the left, yeah? So, what should you do? And I I've said this many, many times in my tutorial videos, talking about PvPing, like the mind games between the two players. And I'm going to have to say it again. Once you've been spotted or the enemy player sees you, change your look or change your angle. Meaning, if he sees you in this spot, don't be in the same spot again when he looks at you again, right? I, as you can see here with me, I, I took a couple of shots, and then after reading the situation correctly, I see that he's going to the right. I immediately move. I don't stay there up top on the second floor of Castle, which is the buildings that we're in right now. This is what we call Castle in uh, on Customs. So... Uh, I take a couple shots at him, I, I then start to move, and I my intention is to cut him off. I see that he's going to the right, cut him off. It's exactly what I do here, and there's a good reason for this. By cutting him off, he's not expecting it, for starters, okay? That's number one, because he knows by now, after I've taken two shots at him, he knows, chances are, I'm up top in Castle, and I'm taking shots at him. Right? So that's where he's looking. That's where his focus is. He is not expecting me to be right in front of him. I catch him right here, right in the open, pretty much with his PP in his hand. He had no idea. He was not expecting this. I caught him out in the open. Good kill. There was not much he could do about it because he was too busy focusing at the top of, uh, of Castle. And he wasn't focusing on what I will be doing next. Okay, because I read his movement and I planned ahead and I got ahead ahead of him and I got in front of him. I cut him off and I was able to get that kill like that right there. Oh, and in case it wasn't obvious already, when you're making this maneuver to flank them, make sure they don't see you. Try not to be obvious about it, okay? So that's the end for this one. Let's move on to the next tip.
So this next one is going to be a long one, but I'll do my best to shorten it up as much as I can just to get to the points so it just doesn't go on forever, yeah? Okay, so in this next one, I hear a lot of gunshots um, popping off at the, I don't know what the compound is behind me. It's like a scav kind of checkpoint with some medical crates and whatnot. I will call it the scav checkpoint, okay, just for argument's sake. Because I don't know, honestly, I don't know what it's called. So I hear shots at the scav checkpoint. Uh, I'm scoping it out, as you can see, with my sniper rifle. Um, and then a few things happened. Um, first of all, I ended up uh, spotting a dead body there, which confirms that there is someone there. I go in to see what's going on, and then I end up spotting uh, a player there. Now, when I spot this player, I can tell two things just from looking at him right here. Um, the first thing is, he looks very new to me, just by the way that he's acting, the way that he's, um, the way that he's geared. Okay? And the second thing is, um, he's crouching and he's being very, very cautious, which tells me um, he's probably not the guy uh, making the shots uh, before. Because if he was, y you wouldn't be crouching around being cautious in case there was someone around because it would have been you, right? So it doesn't make any sense. So that tells me he's not the guy that we're looking for. He's not the person who was shooting and making all that noise. So I now know there's another person involved, so I can play accordingly. Um... And I can deal with that player next. So I go looking for him. I end up finding him and then I end up taking him out. But that's not the main part that I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is what happens next. Okay. So what happens next is I hear a grenade randomly just popping off behind me. And I'm thinking, hmm, what the hell is all that about? So I go to investigate. I get jumped by another player and I ended up killing him too. And, and this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Because in this moment, something just doesn't feel right to me. And I even call it in the, um, in, in the, in the footage. I know it's kind of hard to, to hear what I'm saying because I've turned down the volume so you can hear me now. But um, I actually say, I think there's another one. Just by the way that this guy's playing, it just doesn't feel like that he's alone, you know? And sometimes you get those feelings, like a gut feeling about these sorts of things. And this comes down to experience. If, if you feel like there's another guy, then... Go play it like it is, man. Go make sure there isn't another um, a teammate of the, the player that you just killed. And that's exactly what I do here. My gut was telling me, I really doubt this guy's alone, and I have a feeling that his teammate is further back. I even say it here in the clip. So I'm going to go clear all that out, all that back there, just to make sure, just to be certain, 100% without a shadow of a doubt, certain that I can go loot those bodies and not get contested by some guy sitting in a bush with some rifle or something. I might be mistaken, I don't know, but... Better safe than sorry. Why is this a big bush just like... there? There he is! In front of me somewhere! I knew there was another one. I had a feeling. And that sounds like he's got a DVL. He did indeed have a DVL. So his plan was to wait for me to loot the body of his teammate and then he'd pick me off whilst I'm looting and I'd have no idea where I got shot from and I would just instantly be dead and there'd be nothing I could do about it. So luckily I made this play. Um, my experience told me that he's probably not alone, and I went and I investigated that. So, um, the lesson here is, I'm going to call this one, reading the situation carefully. And listen to your gut, man. Listen to your instincts. If they're telling you that something ain't right, then chances are something ain't right. So, so you never know, going along with that instinct might save your life like it did here. And I ended up finding that final player. That initially saved my life otherwise if i just went like most other people went just jumped on top of the body was like oh boy oh boy licking my chops rubbing my hands together <laughs> look at that loot i'd be dead right now yep I'm, I'm already dead i'm already sleeping with the fishes so listen to your instincts man experience in any situations will pay off in in the in the long run so when, when you got a feeling like that stick with it and follow through okay so, for the next one here, this is a very common, and I mean a very common situation with people um, in this game. You hear someone who's close by, you even hear him running, you might even hear him jumping and shooting and he's probably doing backflips or something, but you know he's there, you know, you know he's there, you know he's there. You go and look, he, he's Houdini, he's gone. Like, where the hell did he go? This is very common and this happens to me a lot too. I'm going to tell you what I do. 
I follow him until, as you can see, he's right there. He's Ryan so in plain view, and I, I'm gonna, I'm chasing him. I've got my AS Val. I'm super happy. I'm gonna just waste this guy, and he's gone. I'm just like, what the hell? Do what I do. Just throw a random nade. That'll get him moving. I promise you, that guy will start moving like someone yelled fried chicken wings at a barbecue in the neighborhood. All right, he'll start running. Trust me, okay? Trust me. So when you when you ch when you're chasing down another player or you're stalking him or whatever and you're trying to find him and then all of a sudden he disappears, I promise you he's still close by. He didn't just disappear out of the game into nothingness. No, he's close by. Just wherever you think he is, just throw a random grenade and you'll get him running. I promise, okay? Just like in the situation right here. It's also important to note that I had elevation here too. So I got up somewhere high. I looked around, had the overview and... Um, when I couldn't find him, I threw random made in the bushes. I figured that's probably where he's at. And then there he goes. He started running out. So you should do the same. Get up somewhere high. Look around. Have the overview like like I did here. And then if you think he, if you even think he's in a particular area, just throw a grenade there and see what happens. Don't worry if he, if he, if you're scared about the player knowing about your position now because you threw a grenade. He still has to find you regardless. Okay. So don't be too concerned about that. Um, just try and find him, and remember to think logically that he couldn't have gotten far, so keep your eyes peeled. By the off chance you don't have any grenades, um, my suggestion to you is to stay up somewhere high so you can keep elevation, because he has to move eventually, and then by the time he moves, you'll be able to see him, because since you're up high, you can see around you everywhere, and so you'll be able to spot him that way, okay? There's going to be two different things I want to point out here. So the first one is... Um, it, and a really easy way to spot other players is because some bags stick out more than others, like a pilgrim bag, for example. That sticks out like a sore thumb, right? Um, so as I'm scanning with my eyes, this is something that I always do. I'm scanning left to right constantly on the surrounding area. So that's how I happen to spot this guy. Um, he probably would have seen me, honestly, if I had my pilgrim bag on. I actually have one, but I dropped it. So that's something I'm going to tell you guys. If you're carrying a big bag... Don't forget to drop it, okay? Because when you get up high like I do, and you got a pilgrim bag on the back, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So it's very easy for players to spot me. If it's easy for players to spot me, then the reverse should be the same too. If they're wearing a pilgrim bag, running around up high somewhere, you know, in tower, yeah, you should be able to see them. Easy. So normally, I only run a tri-zip or a beta 2 bag. That's it. But if you happen to be wearing a pilgrim bag just remember to drop it when when you're when you're playing like this okay so when you're looking around for players you just might spot somebody because of their bag is what i'm trying to is the point that i'm trying to make you might happen to spot a player because he's um because of the color of his bag like let's say he's sitting in a bush and you happen to see the coloring is different like you might see the color of the scav bag because it's like a bit of red you might oh there you go there's a there's a player in that bush gave away his position all right, so this is the final thing I'm going to tell you, and this is probably the number one thing that you can do um, to start finding these players more. So the way that I'm able to do this, and you've probably seen other players do this too, is by scanning with my eyes constantly, and I'm looking for things in, as I'm moving. As I'm running out there in the open fields, I am constantly looking around with my eyes in the surrounding areas to see movement and anything that sticks out, and this right here is a perfect example. As I'm leaving, I'm trying to go down the stairs. I happen to spot movement in the um, in the forest area near Hill 2. And that's how I spotted these two players right here. And I end up taking them out with my long range DVL. How was I able to do that? It's because my eyes are constantly scanning the surrounding area as I'm on the move. Okay. Let me try and show you what I mean. So that's the final tip of this video. Start scanning with your eyes. It's one of the most important things. Um... To do to spot other players and that's how I spot players very easily so what I'm actually doing with my eyes I'm gonna try and explain it is I'm constantly looking around I'm looking from the left of the screen all the way to the right okay I'm gonna pause it right here to try and explain what I what I mean so anytime that I'm running I'm looking from the left and I'm going all the way to the right just like that okay with my eyes and then the same the other way I go from the right looking all the way to the left all right Obviously, I've slowed it down just so you you can see exactly what my eyes are doing, the, the left to right motion. Um, usually, it takes me like a second or two to scan the entire area. Sometimes, it's, it's a little bit slower than that, but that's generally what I do with my eyes. And that's how I'm able to spot people um, 
uh, in the surrounding areas. So I am constantly scanning the, um, the entire area in front of me and to the, to the left and to the right. And I'm looking for irregularities. I'm looking for anything that could potentially look like a player, like a dark spot in a bush or um, the purple color for the pilgrim bag, that sort of thing. Anything that looks like a player or I think in is an indication of a player, I'm going to immediately put all my focus onto that particular spot. So that's what you need to start practicing right now. The next time you get into a game, when you're when you, you're into a raid and you geared up and you're and you're going onto your quests or whatever, start practicing this with your eyes. Um, you'll start spotting people more more than before, and you can thank me later. So I'm just going on with my normal raid here. Um, as I'm sprinting to go to, I believe I'm looking for the tents. Uh, I'm scanning left and right with my eyes. I'm looking around, looking around the surroundings, and I happen to spot a player because I saw him move, and then I ended up chasing him down. We end up getting into a fight, okay? And that's kind of how it goes normally. My eyes do tend to wander, as in they will go up and down a little bit too, especially when I come up to an area where there is some form of elevation, like there could be a mountain up there, or like, because this is woods, yeah, there's um, um this is cotton rock that we're coming up on. Obviously, I will look up as well, but um, generally speaking, it is that left to right motion. All right, guys, that's it. That's the end of the video. Um, that's what I have for you today for my tips and tricks on some of the things that I do when I'm trying to track players um, in this game, in Escape from Tarkov. So hopefully you didn't know about some of the things that I mentioned. Um, hopefully it uh, got you thinking a little bit too about how you should be playing and how you should be approaching the game and all that sort of stuff. And uh, most of all, hopefully you had a good time and that you learned something. So thanks for being here. Much appreciated. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you want to support. Much appreciated, dudes. Thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you want to tell me what you thought of the video. Um, even if you want to tell me that it sucked, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm more than happy to listen to what you guys have to say. Um, if you've got any other suggestions for other videos, educational Tarkov videos, um, I'm more than happy to do them. So feel free to hit them. Um, hit me up with them and I'll let you know what I can do in the um, in the comments down below. Feel free to swing by the live stream and say hello sometime. I stream six days a week at twitch.tv slash Kwame. All other details will be in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Remember to keep practicing, keep improving, stay Kwame, and hopefully I'll see you on the live stream.